Howard pulls hurricane status in the Eastern Pacific. Ninth tropical cyclone of the Eastern Pacific hurricane season is propping up the rest of the field right now, and it's Howard, a Category 1 hurricane, uh, currently at 20.7 degrees north, 114.5 degrees west, and looking decent there. Right now, it's got winds of around 75 miles per hour and a pressure of 986 millibars, uh, moving west northwest at 11 miles per hour. Uh, that movement is likely to continue for some time, uh, gradually moving out to sea away from any land areas. A little landmass there on the top right of that image is the Baja California Peninsula in Mexico. Here's another look at its current position and indeed its wind field, which is uh, fairly um, even, 60 miles towards the northeast and northwestern quadrants and 50 miles to the southeast and southwest. Currently it is 530 kilometers from Cabo San Lucas, 576 from La Paz, 674 from Loreto, 1332 from Tijuana, and 422, 4222 from Hilo, Hawaii, a very long way away to the west. Of course it's never going to get there, but that's just a little reference point. It's pretty much the closest it will be to the Baja California Peninsula right now and it is gradually moving away so it is opening a gap from land areas and indeed there are no threats to land. However 12 foot seas extend outwards as far as 90 nautical miles in the northeastern quadrant and slightly less so in all the other quadrants so for shipping interests uh, this could be a, quite a hazardous storm. But for any land areas, there is no threat from this, uh, and indeed there hasn't been for any inhabited areas throughout its entire life so far. Now the intensification phase may have caught a few people off guard, that happened during the course of today, it was quite rapid actually. And here's the expectation over the next few days, as you see that wind field really start to die off as we get towards the end of the week and it will have dissipated completely by around Friday. Uh, that's at least according to the model consensus at the moment, but it may be uh, still yet to catch up, considering the recency of the intensification phase. Here's a look at the maximum sustained winds right now. National Hurricane Center, of course, at 80 miles per hour already, and the ATCF system suggesting even higher. Uh, other methods, ADT particularly, is lowballing it a little bit in terms of SSEC, in their case, extremely so. NOAA ADT is just about to cross, cross the hurricane threshold, and AMSU there as well, just about touching 80 miles per hour. Here's another look at the uh, winds distribution of the hurricane over the next five days that's percentage chances of receiving tropical storm force winds anywhere in the green zone there on the outer edge is five percent or higher up to 95 percent or 90 percent in the purple zone now here's a look at what the models are showing um, and as you can see we have the storm there peaking very shortly and then dying off extremely quickly as it uh, deviates towards the west southwest and then another storm taking its place behind it so the GFS certainly is thinking that uh, we're not done yet on this hurricane train which has been going on for quite some time now and has given us uh, eight or nine uh, tropical storms already Let's take a look now at the uh, water vapor imagery. This is sort of a mock version of what you would expect from the water vapor imagery on the satellite. Um, it shows that Howard just uh, really fades away, its eye dies off very quickly, and it just shrinks and dies off as you would expect in the typical fashion that you would normally see when sea surface temperatures drop, energy just gradually declines rather than being buffeted by wind shear or being choked up by dry air, although that may also be a bit of a factor too. Just wait for that uh, graphic to finish there and we'll take a look now at the maximum precipitation values and you'll see a trail there coming from uh, Howard not a hugely um, substantial trail and of course it is all at sea so we're only expecting 
maybe up to 10 inches in some isolated areas at sea. Really not much else to say about this particular graphic, although you might be able to see behind the trail from the other storm coming in and general rainfall occurring along the coast of Mexico, which might get enhanced by these two systems. And finally, let's take a look when it's ready at the sea surface temperature graphic. And that will really demonstrate where we're at with this uh, hurricane right now. Sea surface temperatures around the storm at present, currently around 26 degrees Celsius. That's the 79 degree Fahrenheit mark there. Um, as we look along the track of the storm, you'll see it falling into the 60s, which is barely 20 degrees Celsius. So uh, sea surface temperatures drop off a cliff when a storm moves over this area of the Eastern Pacific. And uh, on either side, temperatures will really start falling very quickly there as well. And if it did stay further to the south, it would have had more of a fighting chance, but that's just how it goes in this basin. Howard's progression is probably best seen on this uh, satellite imagery, the Enhanced Infrared Channel, showing the appearance of a rather large eye uh, convection, not particularly astounding, uh, but it's blowing up a little bit further on the western and southern sides into the minus 60s and maybe one or two minus 70 areas. But generally, it's more its structure is looking good. Uh, we won't be seeing extremely high cloud tops considering that it's beyond 20 degrees north already. And perhaps it's become, uh, that, that's part of the reason, as we saw on the sea surface temperatures, why it may be a little bit of a surprise that it has managed to achieve this. Let's see if we can just go to some uh, visible imagery, of course, which I think would be quite agreeable to everyone right now. It's looking pretty good from a visible perspective. Uh, attractive looking storm, uh, as you can see there, with a sort of donut shape, almost uh, surrounded by that much larger uh, band. Uh, really is easy on the eye, just looking at the uh, red channel on the visible imagery as well, the most high resolution version, and you can see how the storm has progressed throughout the day once again. So it's made full advantage of the conditions just after uh, the islands, uh, Socorro Island, um, but it is running out of time and it will begin to weaken very soon. Not sure still whether the GFS scenario of it weakening as quick as it does uh, is going to happen. Uh, but here it is right now as we look at another Eastern Pacific hurricane.